Welcome to Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild. This is part 8, mounting studs and the piston ring. Most of the holes in the cast iron base are threaded and this is to take ordinary fixing bolts. One of the mounting holes must have been in the wrong place originally so it's been filed oval at some stage. But there's still a bit of thread left in there. What I'm going to use are these bolts or I'm going to try these bolts and see if they work. And because the threads in the cast iron base are not particularly good I'm going to screw them into the holes from the inside of the casting. There's nothing much in the way of difficulty with this part of the job. I'm just screwing them in from underneath using a socket driver. And here comes the first bolt. I'm just curious to see whether it's going to be long enough and I don't think it is. These bolts are a perfect length if I was going to use them to just bolt the parts to the casting. But doing it this way I need to use longer ones. As you can see it's nowhere near long enough. As disassembly is exactly the same as assembly, but in reverse, all I have to do is remove the bolt from the underneath. So why am I doing it this way? Well, the answer is quite simple. Originally this engine was held together with lots of random nuts and bolts, as well as pieces of studding. And as I showed in a previous episode, a standard 2BA bolt head is too big for some of the fittings. This engine is not the best made engine I've ever seen, but it will be okay by the time I've refinished it. All I need to do for now is just find some longer 2BA bolts, and I found some in my drawer of 2BA bolts. And yes, I know all the different lengths and types should be in a separate drawer, but I prefer to do it this way. It's a bit like the old days when I was a kid, rummaging through a junk drawer to find parts. In the house where I was raised, there was a large drawer in the kitchen, and this drawer was full of wonderful things, and lots of them. Things like nuts and bolts, screws, washers picture hooks, curtain hooks, you name it, and it was in this drawer, and I could always find what I required, most of the time anyway. A drawer like that would have to be really big these days for the amount of parts that I need. But when I was a child, I used to make rubber-powered model aircraft and things like that. Later on, I moved on to control line, followed by radio control when I reached adulthood. Although thinking about that last statement, did I really ever reach adulthood? Possibly not. Here I am at almost 67 years of age, still playing with toys and enjoying every minute of it. In my pot of assorted 2BA fixings, nuts, bolts, washers, etc., I found some longer bolts, or machine screws if you wish to call them machine screws, and they're just the right length. These are countersunk, but it doesn't really matter because they're going into a hole, and they can't go any further once the countersink comes into contact with the cast iron base. So they should be all the same length when they stick out of the top. Again, a very simple job. I'm using a screwdriver to screw them in place, and eventually I end up with four of these sticking out of the top of the casting. Here's the last one going in place on the column mounting, so that's it. The column mounting is complete. When all of the bolts were firmly in place, the column itself was quite a tight fit, but once I removed the paint from inside the holes, it fitted fine. In an earlier episode, I removed the paint from the shaped pads on the top of the base that support the column, the cylinder and the slide valve drive shaft bearings. But on this engine I think I'm going to leave the paint in place, it will stop the pad from rusting. And as this is spray paint it's very even and a lot flatter, so I won't have a problem with it. Time to move over to the cylinder. The original piston is a bit of a rattle fit in the bore, but as I'm going to fit a silicone o-ring into this groove, it's not going to be a problem because with silicone o-rings the piston does not need to touch the walls of the cylinder. If, however, you're using soft packings such as graphited yarn, then the piston definitely needs to be a good fit in the cylinder. It's time now to rummage through my box of silicone o-rings, or steam grade silicone o-rings as it says on the lid. I need an o-ring that is one inch outside diameter. This o-ring is not one inch outside diameter, it's smaller than that, I stretched it to make it fit. But it doesn't fit the cylinder anyway when it's on the piston. This piston ring is definitely a one inch OD piston ring. And the diameter of the actual o-ring itself is much thicker than the one I just fitted into the existing groove. So it's over to the lathe and it's time to machine the groove a bit deeper. I can't say that I'm overwhelmingly impressed with the concentricity of this piston on the piston rod in the chuck. The chuck's okay, it's just the end of the piston is not concentric with the main shaft. To the purist this will be a problem, to me it's not a problem, 
because the piston does not touch the sides of the cylinder anyway and it's only going to be used for holding the o-ring so by the time I've machined this groove to fit the o-ring everything will be fine the birds will start to sing the sun will come out and it will stop raining hopefully there are three ways to do this job one make a complete new piston and maybe a piston rod assembly that's part one the second way to do it is machine it using a parting tool as I'm showing on screen and do it totally by feel not forgetting to periodically check the fit of the piston ring in the piston groove quite a way to go yet and the third way to do it is the proper way what you should really do is make a new piston and rod and machine the groove according to the specification sheets for o-ring clearances in pistons in cylinders but for the moment I'm not going to do that and I have a bit of a problem too my lathe's motor is on its last legs it's been a bit weird for a while even in the last workshop I can't get a setting on the three-phase converter that makes the lathe start smoothly sometimes the boost stays on which is very bad because it will burn the motor out so I think what I'm going to do is either buy a new lathe which is one option or I'm going to put a new motor in the existing lathe and I'll use a single phase motor which means I need a single phase contactor etc etc I miss the smart and brown really I miss the physical size of it but then again for these tutorials how many people have a lathe that size in their workshop so really I think I may continue to use a small very modest lathe for these tutorials also the money I got for my house in West Yorkshire is dwindling rapidly I did give quite a lot of it away to the family and the plan was to buy a Harley Davidson freewheeler trike which I've always fancied one of those but that's not looking very likely at the moment I need to make a lot more money than I'm currently making from the videos I'm very grateful to my Patreon supporters because without Patreon supporters I can't do any of this but alas I have nowhere near enough Patreon supporters to make it a viable proposition I do this because I like doing it. I'll see how it goes this year, and if the number of Patreon supporters does not pick up, I won't be able to make as many of these videos as I currently do. And that's enough doom and gloom. For now, it's on with the job. I've coated the inside of the cylinder and the piston itself with oil. This is steam oil. Do not use motor oil. It makes the silicone o-ring sticky. This is a perfect fit. It's not tight and it's not slack. And it's nice and oily, just like a girlfriend I used to have. In this clip I'm fitting the oily piston ring to the oily piston and then I put the oily piston in the oily cylinder and it slides up and down beautifully. No tightness whatsoever. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.